Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to cover init systems, but more specifically system D, and then show you how we can use system D to start, stop, and monitor services. Now, during the boot process, after the kernel has finished loading everything it needs to, it then hands over control to system D. Now system D is what is referred to as a init program. And an init program is just a user space program, like any other program on your system, and you'll find it in the slash sbin folder along with many other system binaries. Its main purpose is to start and stop essential service processes on the system, but newer versions have even more responsibilities. So there's three major implementations of init in Linux. We have system v, then we have system d, and then we have upstart. Um, so system d is the newer implement the newer sorry. So system D is the newer implementation of the three and most likely the one you'll run into. So that's going to be the one I'm going to focus on the most. Um, so let's quickly outline what happens when system D runs at boot time. So system D will load its own configuration. It will then determine its boot goal, which is usually default.target. And then it determines all the dependencies of the default boot goal and dependencies of those dependencies as well. Then system D activates the dependencies and the boot goal. And after boot, systemd can now react to system events and activate additional components. So systemd does not just operate on processes and services. It can do many other things like mount file systems, monitor network sockets, and much more. So each type of capability that it has is referred to as a unit type, and each specific capability is called a unit. So systemd's whole purpose in life is to manage these units. Now I want to cover a couple of uh, a couple of more well-known units uh, just so you can have an understanding of how each of these units work and what makes them different. So the first unit I want to cover, and this is probably the most important one and what we'll focus on um, throughout this video, is the dot .service unit. A service unit describes how to manage a service or application on the server, and this will include how to start or stop the service, as well as under which circumstance should we automatically start the service. The next unit I want to cover is the .socket unit. So a socket unit file describes a network or IPC socket or FIFO buffer that systemd uses for socket-based activation. These always have an associated uh, .service file that will be started when activity is seen on the socket that this unit defines. Uh, the next one I want to cover is the timer unit. So the timer unit uh, defines a timer that will be managed by systemd similar to cron job for delayed or scheduled activation. A matching unit will usually be started when the timer is reached. Uh, then we also have the mount unit. So the, this unit defines a mount point on the system to be managed by system D. Uh, these are named after the mount path with slashes changed to dashes. So entries within the slash etsy slash fs tab can have units created automatically. So in this video, um, I'm mostly going to be discussing the system CTL command, which is the central management tool for controlling the init system. We'll cover how to manage services, check statuses, change system states, and work with configuration files by using the system CTL command. So we're going to be using systemd to start and stop services. Um, the first thing I want to show you guys how to do is actually um, is to view a list of all the active units on your system. Um, so to do that, all you have to do is just type in system ctl list dash units. So these are all the available units that we have on our system. Now, most of this won't make sense, so you know don't worry about learning what all of these units mean. I just wanted to show you guys how to actually uh, see them just to see what you have available. Okay, so let's say that we've now installed an application and we want to go ahead and turn that application on. We want to enable its services. Uh, to do that, we can use systemd to enable that service by using the systemctl command. So to start a service, we just type in sudo and systemctl start, and then you do the application name. We'll just call this app name, and then you do dot service. Um, so I already installed Apache before I started recording this video. Um, so let's go ahead and enable Apache, or actually, let's go ahead and start the Apache service, and I'll show you guys how that works. 
So we just do Apache 2, so that's the name of the, the application, and then we do dot .service and we run that. Uh, so now we've started Apache. There's no visual feedback, but I'll show you guys how to confirm if it actually got started. Now, systemd knows to look for the dot .service file for service management command. So you don't actually need to use the dot .service at the end. You can just do Apache 2. And this goes for most of the system CTL commands that we're going to be working with. So if you want to start, stop, restart, or check the status, you don't actually need the dot .service, um, but you can feel free to leave it in if you want. All right, so it's so we've started the Apache application. Uh, let's see how we can verify if it's running. So to check the status of an application, do the same command sudo system CTL, but instead of start, change it to status, and then Apache 2. So this is the important line. So right now it's active and running. Uh, that's the important thing to look for. And it also provides some logs as well, some of the most recent logs. So if there was an issue, it would spit out the last few logs and maybe that's, an inf that's enough information for you to kind of diagnose what happened. But right now Apache's running. Um, just hit Q to exit out of that. And let's say we want to stop Apache. So we do the same command but change this to a stop. And if we check the status again, you can see it's inactive and dead. All right, so now we've learned how to start, stop, and verify the status of an application. How do we restart an application? Um, it's the same command as usual, but instead of a, a start, stop, or status, we just change this to restart. And that's gonna restart the application. Now, if the application in question uh, is able to reload its configuration file without restarting, we can issue the reload command. So we would do sudo systemctl reload, and then the name of the your app name, whatever application. So if it supports that feature, keep in mind that you can uh, run the reload command uh, to avoid having to restart the application, but instead just reloading the, um, the configuration file. So I think that's, I think the reason you might want to do that is if you made a config change, instead of having to stop the service and potentially cause impact, you just tell it to reread its configuration so it updates how it operates. Now, even though we've enabled Apache, if I shut the system down, um, the whole operating system, and then bring it back up, you'll find that if I do a sudo systemctl status Apache, it's going to say it's dead, it's inactive. Uh, and the reason for that is that we haven't configured it uh, to tell systemd to start the service automatically at boot. So by default, it's not going to start um, on boot. So every time we reload, we're going to have to manually log in and, and re-enable it. But we can go ahead and actually tell systemd to enable this application on boot for us so that we don't have to do that. And the command to do that is sudo systemctl enable then the app name, so we can just do Apache 2. So that's just providing a little feedback, letting us know that now on boot, Apache 2 is going to start. And if we want to go ahead and prevent it from automatically enabling a service on boot, we can disable that feature. So we can just do disable. And once we do that, now Apache 2 will not automatically start on boot. And if you want to verify if a service is configured to automatically um, start on boot, you can run the systemctl is-enabled command and then the application name. So if we do Apache 2, it's saying it's disabled right now. And if we enable it real quick, and then check the is enabled, it's going to tell us, yes, it is enabled. It will automatically start on boot. Now, if you want to see a list of all the active units that systemd knows about, we can print that out using systemctl list dash units. Right. Um, but this is only going to show uh, active units. If you want to see all units, you have to do system ctl list dash units and then dash dash all and that's going to show you all units even ones that aren't active 
Now the list units command only displays units that systemd has attempted to parse and load into memory. Now since systemd will only read units that it thinks that it needs, this will not necessarily include all of the available units on the system. To see every available unit file within the systemd paths, including those that systemd has not attempted to load, you can use the list-unit-files command instead. So this shows everything. If you want to see everything, um, this is the command to run. Now Linux stores these unit files in the following directory. Whoops. What did I misspell? Here we go. And if we just do an ls, we can see all the unit files. And we can even grep for Apache just to see the unit files associated with Apache. And you can see here, we've got a couple of them. And this is the one we were working on to start and stop the Apache service. So this is the unit file that allows us to do that. All right, guys, I've showed you how to start, stop, restart, and monitor different services using systemd. I want to show you guys now how to view the logs for systemd. So systemd has uh, the journal ctl command, which is used for viewing logs collected by systemd itself. Um, the systemd-journal-d service is responsible for the systemd's log collection, and it retrieves messages from the kernel, the systemd services, and other sources. And these logs are all gathered in a central location, which makes them really easy to um, review and look over. The log records in the journal are structured and indexed, and as a result, the journal CTL is able to present your log information in a variety of useful formats. Um, so to look at the journal CTL, all you have to type in is just journal CTL. So that's going to show you all of the logs that systemd has created. Um, now, this isn't really that useful because it's a ton of logs for all services and the kernel, and it's all just jammed up into essentially one file. And that's not going to be very helpful for us because it's a massive amount of logs. So journal CTL gives us a few commands that allow us to filter out what we're looking for based off of different criteria. Um, let's say we want to see all the logs from a certain point. We can do that um, with the dash dash since flag. So we can do journal CTL and then we do dash dash since and we put quotations and then we put the date and time. So let's uh, let's say we want to see all logs from August 16th, okay? Um, the format of the time or the date and time would be 2018, well actually it's 2019, 2019-08 for August, and then we want August 16th, and then we put the time. So we could do, you know, that would be 12.30, um, zero seconds. Okay, uh, so that's the format that we would provide, and you can see here it's all the logs from the the point at which we uh, asked for. Um, we can also do the exact opposite of that instead, and use the actually before we proceed, um, if you just want to see from a certain date, you can actually just leave the time off, and it's going to default to just zero zero. So if you don't put a time, it's just going to default to that. So if you have no preference in time, just go ahead and put the date in there. And you can see it does the same thing. So these were actually the first logs for that date. All right, so we covered how to look at logs from a starting point. How do we see all the logs from the beginning of the file up to a certain date? Um, we have the dash dash until flag to handle that. So we can do journal ctl dash dash until, and then we put the same exact date time format that we provided in the previous command. So let's say we want to go to 2019-08, so August, and then we'll say mm, 19th. And then I don't feel like putting in a specific time, so we'll leave that off. 
and you can see here it's going to start at the top of the file so the first log for this journal CTL is at August 10th and it's going to go all the way up to the date I requested so it's going to go all the way to August 19th I'm not going to scroll through all of that for you guys but just know that that's how that command works and we can also combine both of those flags to give us a specific window so if we want to see just like a two-day window from um, let's say the 17th to the 19th we can do that as well so we can do journal ctl dash dash uh, since 2019 dash 08 dash 17 so this is saying start at this date and then go until this date so we're going to get those two days worth of logs and once again you can also put in specific times as well and you can see here we start at the 17th and we can go it'll go all the way till the 19th and there we go right this is just a few seconds before it turns to August 19th um, journal CTL has a few other commands to make it a little easier to uh, see specific logs we can also do the dash yesterday flag so it's going to show you logs for the day before and we can just do journal CTL dash dash since yesterday and it's going to show me the logs for yesterday or since yesterday we can also specify a time so that would be you know since a specific time of today we can do nine o'clock and then we can do dash dash until one hour ago and it's going to show you all the log from nine o'clock till an hour before now if you want to see all the logs um, for the last boot of your server we can do journal ctl dash b and let's say if we want to filter just for kernel messages we can do journal ctl dash k and these are just going to be kernel logs as you can see but more importantly usually what's going to happen is that you're going to try and start a service um, a certain application and it's going to fail and you're going to want to see the logs for that specific application uh, you can do that with the dash u flag so we can do journal ctl dash u and then we can provide the, the service name so apache2 in this case will show me all the logs associated with apache and you can see here we started we stopped and this all happened just you know at the beginning of this video so that's how you filter based off of a specific application you can, so you can also filter based off of a PID of a process so we can do journal ctl underscore PID equals and then you do the PID number so like whatever one two three four you just do one it's going to show you the init process so that's just another way of doing it as well um, and that pretty much wraps up everything I had for you guys hopefully you found it helpful